Hi everyone, this is Mike Balzer of All Things 3D and uh, also the husband to Pamela Siobhan Scott, who's an LMF LMFT, who told me that there are a number of you out there that uh, would like more information about DoxyMe. So if I seem a little, uh, what's the word for it, a little robotic, I have no feedback coming back to me. Uh, normally when I do this uh, with my All Things 3D uh, podcast slash YouTube channel, uh, I, I'm either working with a guest or I had a partner at one time. So there's a little bit more direction going on. So I may sound a little bit robotic at this point. So before I get started, um, essentially I'll be able to, with my setup here, go between my main screen here. And if you notice the screen, uh, is at 720p, and what does that mean? That's a lower uh, quality signal uh, than uh, you may be experiencing if you're using Netflix or something like that. I did that in order to uh, basically, uh, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, minimize the amount of bandwidth that is required uh, so there will be less disruptions. Uh, some of you may have already experienced this using DoxyMe, that there are glitches, a uh, person freezes, uh, the quality goes in and out, and we're going to discuss why that all happens. And uh, hopefully you can hear me. If you're in the chat room, I'm going to go ahead and please uh, let me know uh, if my quality is okay, meaning the audio portion that you can understand me. And uh, if so, uh, I'll go ahead and move forward. Okay, well... Um, there may be a slight delay as well uh, using YouTube Live. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Uh, let me see. Let me go ahead and bring up my outline here. And uh, my notes will all be available to uh, anybody who's interested. Uh, after this particular uh, presentation and... Uh, I'll have links um, that I'll be going through here as well so that uh, you'll be able to click on them and go outside. So let's kind of go through uh, some of the items that I think are very important uh, for doing a particular uh, session. And one of them, as you're probably looking at me right now, is ensuring that your video quality is decent. Now I'm using a technique, and if you've played with Zoom, you're probably familiar with it as well. Uh, essentially, my background here is a green screen and I have basically put something else behind it. Now obviously uh, DoxyMe doesn't have that capability, so you want to make sure that your own um, background, uh, and we'll get to that in a moment, but uh, essentially that quality is uh, decent as well. And uh, we're going to look at lighting and audio equipment, the software, and as just mentioned, the environment. Okay, so let's kind of go into the equipment right now. I don't know what you're using, but uh, when my wife um, has had clients and they can uh, basically be on anything from a mobile phone, which is either Android or iOS, an iPad, uh, a mobile desktop unit or a laptop unit, and the quality of the signal may vary. Now what's important from your perspective as the provider is to ensure the quality going to them is great. And so we're going to kind of go over that a little bit. So what I recommend is uh, if you're using a laptop, a lot of the quality uh, or in some of these webcams that are built in isn't as good as it should be. And the reason I say that is uh, a lot of times they go with a 720p signal, which is uh, very similar to what we have here. And uh, a lot of the newer webcams, uh, especially from webcam, and I'm going to mention two uh, right now. One is the Logitech 920, and the other is uh, the Logitech 930, which is what my wife uses. And the reason that I have recommended the 930 to her is it gives her a little bit wider uh, view, and so that essentially she uh, isn't just like a close-up of the head, as you know, a little bit better than what I've got here and uh, also allows her to get closer so she doesn't have to have the webcam further away from her. Now, if you would prefer just to have your head showing, um, the 920 or some other alternatives might be okay. But I, I, excuse me, I recommend the 930 
Uh, it's considered an enterprise. It's about $100, uh, but the quality is very decent. It's a 1080p camera, and the same thing with the 920. It is also a, uh, a decent uh, uh, webcam camera. Now, Microsoft also makes some, uh, some cameras. I've used one in the past, but uh, I've kind of gravitated back to the Logitech 920 and the 930 series. And again, they, they range depending uh, if you buy a used one for anywhere from like $35 all the way up to $100, $120. I probably wouldn't push any more quality from that perspective. Uh, you may have heard people using uh, camcorders or professional cameras, and you can do that as well uh, using an HDMI to USB converter, but that may be far more complex than you want to get into. Um, but again, try and work something uh, other than what's built into your laptop or your PCs. I know there's some all-in-one units as well. Uh, so again, Logitech 920 or the Logitech 930. Now audio, uh, as I mentioned when I first started here is, how is my audio? Uh, essentially, I use, in this particular case, a, a little lavalier mic or a clip-on mic. Uh, this one is, I think, is an omnidirectional. Uh, but they make different types of lavaliers, and they can uh, range from about $35 all the way up to $300. Obviously, that's the more professional version as you get higher in pricing. And I'm going to go through a few uh, Amazon links here. Obviously, if you don't choose Amazon, uh, you can probably find something like this at Best Buy as well. Just keep in mind, uh, don't let them upsell you. A lot of times, they lower about $25. Uh, and 25 to about $50 in a lavalier is good. Now, why do I recommend a lavalier mic? Um, for one, you can get it closer to your mouth. And also, if you get one of the smaller ones, mine's a little bit bulkier. It's a, essentially what they call a dynamic mic. Um, it's one, as I mentioned, is um, you can't see it or it's very small. The other thing is that it's closer to your mouth. And so the quality is going to be a little bit better. Uh, if you've ever listened to somebody, if you've done some type of FaceTime or something with somebody else who's using their phone and they don't have something clipped on to themselves, uh, the quality is, might be okay, but there's a lot of ambient noise. Uh, so I highly recommend going with a lavalier mic. Okay. Um, so essentially, uh, Terry is telling me um, that she says the streaming started six minutes ago, but her um, her box is black. Hmm, that's an interesting question. What I would suggest, um, let me go ahead and chat with her, is that is refreshing the screen. Sometimes, uh, especially with Chrome, if that's what you're using, and she may be using something. Uh, some web browsers, as if you've done this before, may not work so well. And I'm going to mention a little bit later why doxing me and as what I'm using now, which is YouTube Live, or if you've used Google Hangouts, um, all may have similar quality and issues because they all use the same um, encoder system beneath it. So one of the things that you may have already been aware of in telling your clients is if they're going to use a certain type of browser to go with Chrome. And uh, again, I'll go into that a little bit later. So um, let's see. Pretty sure I identify that this is going to be recorded. Uh, so there will be a version of this available on my YouTube channel as well. And uh, so we can go with that. Okay, so let's get back into this. I'm going to pretty much stick with these uh, lavalier mics. And if you're running off a desktop, uh, what I would suggest is uh, get one of these 1 8 types and you can go on Amazon and they basically will direct you and I will uh, go ahead and go out to a particular site right now that we can work off of and uh, you should be able to see this so this is a professional guide this is the one that my yeah 
So Terry, when they um, okay, hmm. so I don't know if Terry can hear me. If Terry, you can hear me, but you just have a black screen. Uh, let's see. I don't know why that would be. Um, yeah, that shouldn't be occurring again. Might want to bring down or shut down the entire Chrome browser and then bring it back up again. I may. Um, let's see. If, if it's still an issue with you, I could bring it up on another device here and see what comes up. And okay, so Terry, uh, great. I'm glad that worked for you. Okay, so what you see behind me here, and again, my system is fairly sophisticated. I use a product called vMix. I have plus a a very complex. Um, four-port HDMI. HDMI is the system that we use to connect to our TVs with. So I can have multiple inputs and with multiple inputs I can have, as you can see behind me, uh, different backgrounds. I can have different camera setups and basically control it all from a touch screen in front of me. Uh, so that allows me to show uh, things behind me and in this case I have an Amazon page up. Again, I don't necessarily recommend that you shop from Amazon. I leave that up to you. Um, I'm using it because obviously they carry a lot of things and more importantly they have a lot of good information uh, that we can talk about while uh, we're on this. So this is the one, um, well actually uh, this one, this is, let me find the correct one. Okay. There are multiple ones and I may not have brought it up so Okay, well, we'll stick with this. So this one here actually has the um, a conversion built right into it for the lightning port. So if you're running this off an iPad or an iOS device, I highly recommend uh, going with something like this. It connects right into it, automatically seen by the, the uh, and the other thing that uh, might be disconcerting I'm looking at my screen here and it may not be in real time so there might be a five second delay. Um, so if I'm talking about something at this moment, right now I'm on the professional grade lavalier lapel mic so hopefully you're all seeing the same thing. I'm reviewing it and it does seem to be on the same screen. So I'll try and make sure that when I start talking um, that it's relative to what I'm doing here. And if I ignore what I'm seeing up there, I should be okay by the time you're seeing it. Uh, so we should be able to do this well. And we're going to talk about that too. If you may have noticed, sometimes lag could be a problem too when you're interacting with your client. Okay, so back to this. So again, I recommend a good lavalier mic and or a lapel mic. And there are two different types. The one here we have is an omnidirectional behind me. And uh, this one plugs right into a lightning port. You may have seen some that have an eighth inch plug that can be adapted to go directly into your PC. And uh, if you notice, there are some PCs have a, what they call a line in or a mic in and a headphone jack. And uh, these are very important from a laptop or a desktop perspective because this allows you to bring a better quality sound. I do know that a lot of webcams have a built-in mic and the quality varies. The Logitechs are fairly good, but I highly recommend that you go with this. Uh, I think it's very important uh, that your client can understand what you're saying. And obviously the best or the better the production quality that you're providing your client, I think it works out. Uh, the, I guess the worst thing that we want to happen is your client not understanding what you're saying. All right, so going back to this, um, so this is one of them, and as you can see, the pricing is, is fairly decent. And again, you don't have to shop on Amazon. Uh, you could go to Best Buy or wherever you'd like to go and uh, buy from there. Okay, so here is another uh, type. And again, uh, I don't know how quickly this will update. I don't see it updating yet. Um, but I'm assuming by the time you get it that we should be on the same page. So this is, um, again, a lot of these have different names, but the point is they're all uh, essentially made in China. And you know, I don't know your opinion about that, but uh, the Chinese obviously manufacture for professional quality audio as well. And a lot of these are, are really decent, especially for their pricing. So this is a version uh, that can be utilized as well. 
using the mic in jack. Uh, some of the older iPhones as well as your iPad have that capability. And again, I do recommend that. Okay. So we'll skip that for now and we'll move on to, I had one more that I was going to bring up. It's the one that uh, I, I purchased for my wife. Uh, so let me see if I can find it real quick. Go back to my notes. Okay. So this is the one that I, I purchased for my wife, and it's very affordable, $22. And the cool thing about this is that it has a built-in USB um, driver for it. So all the electronics, so all you have to do is plug it into a USB port. So if you don't have a mic, uh, feature built into your laptop or your desktop unit. Um, you can go ahead and use this. And the other thing that's cool about this, it also includes a headphone jack. And we really haven't got into the uh, using headphones, but you may have noticed that sometimes when you're speaking with your client, uh, you may hear what they call feedback, which is this irritating tone. Uh, if that's happening, what I have recommended is that a person uses earbuds or a headset. I prefer the earbuds and I've got some here. They're on the phone. There we go. And what's nice about using earbuds, if you obviously get the small compact ones, is that uh, if you put them in your ears, um, they don't cover your head. And the other thing you may have noticed is that I'm not using one of those podcast mic, even though I have one here. Um, and the, again, the main reason for not doing that is you want your client to see your face, and I would also recommend to the client or for your clients to be able to do the th same thing as well uh, so that you can see their, their body language, um, their expression, and looking into the camera. Now, you may have noticed I'm looking at different screens because actually my camera is up a little bit higher, but you probably want to be able to, to have it at eye level so that you are essentially looking at the client. And one of the things I've done with my wife is set it in such a manner so that the picture of her client is right underneath it. So when she's looking at it, she almost has eye-to-eye -eye contact, as you're probably aware of. Eye-to-eye -eye contact is very important uh, in dealing with your clients. And so, again, try and not cover your face with a headset or one of these podcast mic. And again, I recommend a lapel mic. And the one behind me, uh, which is the Fifine, again, it's a Chinese manufactured device. Um, which works really going to be well. She's had it for three years and uh, it's really worked well for her. Now my wife doesn't like to use headset and uh, you may find that it's okay not to run with it. She doesn't seem to have any reverb but uh, one other thing that I'm going to mention on this particular mic that's very important is it's called a cardioid map or some microphone and what that means is it's more unidirectional and that's kind of a nice feature because it kind of blocks out noise so if you're in a crowded office or uh, multiple offices and there's a lot of ambient noise. Uh, as you know, um, a lot of you have these little, uh, what do you want to call it, white noise generators you put outside your door. Uh, this actually helps isolate external audio, especially if you're now having to do this from home and you may not have a, a certain area that is completely blocked off from the rest of the, uh, the, the environment other rooms, so forth. So I really like this one because it does seem to also block out a lot of ambient noise. And so it kind of isolates it just to the user. And also she can use this with just the speaker in her uh, monitor to hear her client and it doesn't create that feedback issue. Uh, so if you don't like wearing headsets or earbuds, uh, again, I would probably recommend it. And again, at $22, it's pretty good. It's plug and play. You just plug it right into your PC or laptop, and it immediately finds it and sets it up. You do have to go into your settings, and uh, uh, we'll go into that a little bit later. But that's also very important because if, uh, if you don't have your microphone or your webcam uh, set up properly before going into your session, uh, or the same thing with your client, that's why you can't see them, that's why you possibly can't hear them, and so we're going to go through that in a little bit um, on how we can actually do that. So, and it may be a little bit cumbersome, I'm, I'm going to try and show this on multiple devices, uh, 
they've kind of, uh, in actually it's been a good thing, but uh, I just noticed today there's no longer any uh, iPhone or iOS app, uh, so that means it works with Safari, which is a cool thing, so then your clients just need to go out to Safari. I've noticed they've done a much better job out on their website, uh, which we're going to go into a little bit, uh, providing client information. Uh, I had put something together for my wife uh, when this first started out, again, as she mentioned, uh, we started this about three years ago with um, Doxy Me, and it was a rough road in the beginning. We had a few issues, um, but I've worked with them, and obviously they've polished that end of it. Uh, now, obviously, some of you may be having problems now, but I think that has to do with uh, the surge in traffic, and we'll talk about that too, and when key times are to actually do this and uh, different services, and uh, we'll go from that in a moment. All right, so back to this. Almost done with the microphones. Again, this one works well. Um, I was going to go into, and it'll be in my notes, uh, if you are a little savvier or if you have a, a loved one or a partner uh, who has a little bit more technical experience, uh, you can really go really complicated with this. My opinion, the more complicated that you make it, the more problems you're going to have. And trust me, somebody who's probably got about 100 different things set up for this, um, I wouldn't say that's the reason that I was five minutes late. But on occasion, the more complex the system, and if you're the only one handling it, uh, the more chances something can go wrong. So sometimes simpler is easy. And so again, good microphone. You can get by with the webcam microphone if you're using something like the Logitech 920 or the 930. But again, a nice, good lapel microphone is very important. Uh, you could use ear, or earbuds or headset. I recommend it, um, but you could use uh, the speakers in your, your, your monitor or your laptop. Uh, the quality isn't good, so if you find yourself having to strain to listen to your client because they have poor quality, uh, again, headsets really help kind of isolate the external noise as well, so that may be good. Okay, so let's kind of move on. Let me bring up, I'm actually using a, a small Android device for my notes, and it keeps going to sleep on me, so I apologize. Okay, so the other thing that you might be wondering about is, well, what about wireless devices? I know I don't have any, but I know that Apple has what they call the Apple AirPods. And then there are other devices out there. I've got a Bluetooth headset that I use for my Android device. And my opinion is um, kind of stay away from them. And the reason for that is uh, the Bluetooth quality, even though it's OK, um, it's not the best quality. And also, you've got one more signal that could be a problem that you'd have to worry about. Um, I've been working kind of in the, what do you call it, the digital filmmaking videography for about 20 years now, and I have found that having good old wires between one device and the other gives you the cleanest uh, sound, and if somebody's not messing with your setup, normally is excuse me, reliable from day to day. And that's another thing, if you can set up a PC, maybe an older one specifically for this, I highly recommend it. Uh, my system that I'm using here is made that way specifically so that I can just fire it up and have everything up and running. I suggest the same thing from on your end as well. Uh, one other thing, and I don't know if I'll be able eh, I won't be able I've got a second camera, but I'm not going to move it right now. The other thing to worry about, I don't know if you're able to see me, but notice how my lighting is fairly balanced. If you've ever um, seen some of these, uh, again, if you're working with your kids or family members on FaceTime, you may have noticed that their faces are in complete shadow. And so what I recommend, and what I set up for, our, for my wife, and I'll put some images of her little setup uh, in the show notes when I get done with it, is I found these really inexpensive LED light strips and put them on the sides of her. She's got a fold-out desk as well as above. Uh, you can get a couple of lights um, from Amazon or somewhere else. They don't have to be expensive. But the important thing is um, to basically set up light in front of you and minimize the light behind you um, so that the camera doesn't have to work harder 
And again, the more light that you give these webcams and other cameras, uh, the better the quality. Uh, you may have noticed some people there's noise in the image and so forth. Again, that's because they don't have enough light. And uh, as mentioned, uh, if anybody's interested in how to set up their desk with this lighting system, I can provide some instructions. But mainly, just make sure you have some balanced light. I've got two lights on the side here, and then I have a circular light in front of, um, around my, I actually use a camcorder for my main um, camera system here. So that provides direct light. And then I have a separate back uh, lighting system for my green screen. Uh, but again, that's getting a little bit overboard. Uh, just make sure that you have some good diffused lighting in front of you. Uh, and that actually helps uh, not only with the camera looking better, but it also helps in making you looking better. The other thing is the position of your camera. As mentioned, mine's a little bit above me, um, but you want to make sure it's kind of like at eye level. Uh, don't have it below you, uh, so it's coming up your nose. Uh, don't have it off to the side if you can avoid it. The good thing is to be able to have eye contact with the camera, and if I had a better setup here, I would essentially build the camera so that I would be, it would be like I was looking into it, um, but I have a three monitor system. So again, it's like you're talking to the camera, and it's a little more difficult um, because obviously you're not talking to your client, so the eye-to-eye -eye contact's not there. Um, but if you set your monitor up and your webcam up properly, uh, it gives a really good illusion. And the same thing for the client. Don't hesitate to tell your clients uh, the setup as well. Now, DoxyMe has some information, but I'm also going to uh, provide some of the notes that I gave my wife to send out to her client. But again, the same thing. They should be uh, on a, on a if, if they've got to do it from an iPad or an iPhone, make sure that it is sitting on a table and there are a lot of different items. Um, this is something I got here for an iPad. It's about $5. You put your iPad um, or your, your, even your iPhone into this. Uh, they make cases with little clips, but essentially they want to have it positioned in front of them so that they're not moving it. Uh, my wife has told me there are people that um, essentially put it on their dashboard while they're driving, which obviously doesn't help you if you've got video. So it's best to have a nice quiet place so that you can hear them properly. Their camera is still so that you can see their face. And spend about five minutes getting that through. And then uh, because a long-term relationship now through telemedicine is really important to create that uh, direct contact and that eye contact that uh, we take for granted in our office situations. So keep that in mind too. Also lighting is important for them as well. Um, but I, it's up to you on how draconian you want to be in ensuring that works. So that kind of gets through the equipment. Again, good microphone. Headsets I recommend, but not needed unless you're starting to get some type of feedback. Um, webcam is important for good quality. Recommend the Logitech Series 920 or 930. Okay, so the next thing, and my little unit went to sleep again, is your internet provider. Now, if you live in the Oregon area or in Portland, uh, I've looked up several of them. Obviously, the best performance is the fastest connection, but a lot of times that costs extra money. Uh, I think we pay about $60, $70 a month, and we have a fairly decent connection. And what you want to look at is your upload and your download speed. Um, anything that gives you about 100K plus for upload, I recommend about um, 500K, and uh, what I'm, I'm probably speaking numbers that make no sense to you. Um, essentially, the more, the higher the number, the more the bitstream uh, can be fast enough to go to uh, the internet. Uh, I'm kind of rambling a little bit here, uh, but essentially, in this case, the higher the number, the better. Um, some people recommend at least a one megabit upload and download. Uh, it's going to be really difficult uh, depending on the pricing tier that you're at. Um, but there are ways to kind of minimize having to spend a lot of money on it. But I think about $50 a month, medium tier, 
uh, should be more than adequate if you take some precautions, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, I know in our area, Xfinity, uh, which is a cable modem, and I'm going to get into the differences between cable modems and um, telephone service, which is what they call DSL. What the differences are, first of all, DSLs, um, if you've ever heard of the term, is the one that works with your landline uh, through AT&T or service like that. The quality or the performance is not the same as a cable modem, but the good thing about it is that you're not really sharing that connection. Most cable modems or cable connections through Xfinity, Cox, or so forth, you're literally sharing your bandwidth with your neighbors. So if everybody is doing something at the same time, your bandwidth is going to suffer. Uh, they've made uh, strides to improve that by one giving more bandwidth uh, to the neighborhoods, but again, it's shared bandwidth. So if you've got somebody in your neighborhood who likes to download a lot of things day long, uh, or if you've got somebody who's providing some type of streaming service, um, that could affect your performance. Um, there's one other option, and that's fiber. You may have heard that term. Um, if you can get it, and if you want to spend the money for it, I recommend it. Um, but uh, again, a mid-tier cable modem type service is probably the best, and so I would probably go in that direction. Um, and that's what we've been using, and it's been working fine with some caveats. And one of the biggest caveats is to make sure if you're with a client that you don't have, if you've got teenagers, that they're not streaming a bunch of stuff, videos and so forth, while you're trying to have your client session. If you're uh, still in an office situation where there might be other people sharing, anybody else that's either downloading or uploading things during the time that you're having, uh, your session can affect your performance. Um, from an IT perspective, as I mentioned, I've done that as well. Um, I've set up what they call VLANs that are specializing uh, certain connections virtually to different people, so they get most of the bandwidth while everybody else gets a smaller portion of it, and they're kind of parceled out, and they don't affect either. There's something what they call quality of service connections. Most routers have that. Works very similar provides more service to a particular IP address, which could be your PC or your workstation. And again, I'm getting a little bit technical here, but there are ways of minimizing uh, the interference from others or consuming your bandwidth when you need it. And I would highly recommend if you've got somebody who's technical or even uh, go out and hire somebody. Uh, I don't know if uh, Best Buy still has their Geek Squad and I've heard some horror stories, so I don't think I'm going to really recommend that. But if you know your Geek Squad is pretty good and they have experience with that area, uh, I would recommend it. Don't go to uh, Xfinity to have them come out if you've got one of their cable modems. And I could get into how you should buy your own and so forth. Uh, best thing is find yourself a good IT person and they're and the money you'd spent is well worth it. Uh, they can set up your system so that it's streamlined to protect your services, and um, that's probably the most important thing. If you don't have money, all I can recommend is don't let anybody else use the internet while you're on it. Uh, if I could say, don't let them stream, we know that if you're telling a teenager that, that probably wouldn't work. So probably block out a period that you're going to be using it. Or if you've got a little extra money, have a separate internet connection built into your home or your home office, if you don't already have that, specifically for your needs. Uh, which again, would cost money. And if some of you are complaining about the cost of uh, DoxyMe, uh, other than it's free package, then that's probably going to jump you up a price. But if this is what we're going to be doing, uh, I highly recommend uh, one thing or another, either a separate internet connection or having an IT person come out there setting up your systems so that it prioritizes your internet traffic. Okay, so, and th that'll really help. Um, and again, if you're using a cable modem, there's very little you can do for the, the neighborhood uh, consumers who like to consume all the bandwidth. You can make a complaint. Um, but I found that that really work, doesn't work very well. 
Okay, so let's look at a little bit of the background of teleconferencing. Uh, essentially, it first started out as voice on landlines, uh, basically a telephone and a speakerphone. If you've done any office type work, you're probably very familiar with what I'm talking about. Uh, then uh, the internet came in and then there were specialized services set up so that voice could be used over the internet. That's the term VoIP, V-O-I-P. And uh, there are a couple of companies, Ring Central and Comcast Xfinity has a, a business service uh, that work in that manner. And then uh, from a video perspective, let's say 20, 30 years ago, you had de dedicated uh, digital circuits, which are extremely expensive. Now we have a multitude of services. You may have heard of a Microsoft Skype. And now they have a service called Microsoft Teams, uh, Google Hangouts, Apple FaceTime, uh, Zoom, which has become extremely popular right now. And there's something else to look at. I looked into it the other day. So if you feel go, or excuse me, uh, the DoxyMe service is just not working for you or you want to back up, I'd look into Zoom as well. Uh, I think they have a pricing tier of about $15. Uh, if you can afford it, use that as a backup system. And you can also sign, uh, uh, and I can't think of the, the term now, I'll get into it in a moment, but uh, so that uh, you can be HIPAA compliant with Zoom. Uh, there's a product called GoToMeeting and then finally Slack. Uh, you may have heard of that. That's kind of an office um, messaging system that now has a video service, um, but you can also use Zoom with that as well. And uh, that's about it. So as mentioned, this is not going to be about these other services uh, and mainly DoxyMe. So now we'll get into DoxyMe. So hopefully I haven't lost anybody. hit my page and there we go so here's the main page looks really inviting in fact I think I've seen this doctor on other websites as too and let's kind of go through it a little bit so I'm assuming if you're already in this little introduction on how to use DoxyMe and the best quality features I shouldn't have to go through all this. Uh, if you're still using the free version, I don't know if you're aware of the different pricing tiers, but the free, uh, and I'll go through them really quick, provide these kind of uh, advantages. Minutes, unlimited, sessions, unlimited. Uh, you can have a personalized room URL, an iOS or Android, again, now through the browser and LD quality, and that's probably the most important factor of going to an upgrade professional, is the LD is not really good. And if you want better performance, I would highly recommend spending the extra $35. And if you look at the professional capability, um, essentially it provides everything as you, at, excuse me, that you had in the previous free column but also provides audio only calling and the different tiers of um, quality video. So I would recommend doing that and, uh, and again that would bump up the quality. And the audio, excuse me, the audio only is also a neat feature because if you have a client who has a poor performing internet connection and the video just can't handle it, you can still have a conversation through audio and I know that some clients may even prefer that. I mean, I leave that to you, um, but I do know that they have that capability. Obviously, a phone call works too, but a phone call is not HIPAA compliant. Workflow features. I'm just going to go through. You can read this yourself. Um, you have a room passcode, so that way people can't bomb your system. That seems to be a big issue with Zoom at this particular time is that uh, people can actually troll um, your video service by having a passcode that kind of limits that. You can edit your waiting room. I've done that for my wife so that I've added little links so that the client, just like in a regular waiting room, can go out and browse at other things until um, you're ready for the session. And then you also have text and email notifications. She loves this feature because um, she gets text messages or an email reminding her or uh, identifying that her client is ready. So she's not having to 
basically shackle herself to her desktop waiting for the desktop uh, to identify it. So that's a nice feature um, for, again, the extra $35 a month. Uh, some other things that are available for extensions, you can photo capture directly in or screen capture, but there are other ways to do that. Group calling, uh, which is a nice feature if you're going to be using it for uh, counseling, group counseling or something like that. I've noticed that some of the uh, comments in the, uh, the message thread identify that this doesn't really work well. My wife used it the other day uh, for two people and it seemed to work okay. So like a lot of things, uh, as you load the system, it might be uh, it might have to downgrade the performance. The other thing that I found with Google, and again, if you're not aware of it, their uh, backbone or the the video streaming, um, what do you want to call it, uh, protocol is based off of Google proto uh, protocol, and it's one of the reasons why they had to build an app for iOS originally and why it does not work on Microsoft Internet Explorer or the early version of Edge uh, because they didn't have this protocol built into their browsers. Uh, so that's something interesting. Um, but the reason I mention that is a lot of times, especially in a group setting, the lowest common denominator, the one with the worst um, video stream, sometimes seems to pull the entire video call down and you may have noticed that yourself um, so it's best to make sure everybody's kind of at the same level and so this may be a reason why some people have had some things uh, that affected them and then obviously a feature coming later on is teleconsent uh, which I think uh, is an important feature as well and then from a supports perspective uh, you can have on-demand chat which is kind of a neat feature uh, now so that if you want almost instant chatting unless obviously uh, they're getting a lot of people who are having issues, and that won't be very useful. And then scheduled phone or video for support, which can be very uh, important as well, so that you're not having to wait for it. Okay, I'm not going to go through the rest of the features. Uh, you can do it security. Uh, basically, it, they're very similar. So that uh, that's about it from the differences between it, and I think. If you're going to be doing this, as my wife, and I think is, well, right now it's about 100%, but uh, she was at about 50% uh, telemedicine or uh, video conferencing for her clients, and that seemed to really uh, work well. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, as she likes to say, you can be dressed up professionally from the top up. It's funny, I guess there was a post made the other day that uh, that the sales, I can't remember what store, um, for tops was higher than bottoms, which obviously seems kind of obvious, but uh, I guess that a lot of people may only be wearing pajamas to work, at least from the bottom down, or top down. Okay, so um, let's keep moving on. So I'm gonna sign in here as my wife, but before going, in doing this, let's kind of go and look at some of the features that you can point your client to. One, there's a nice little video, and I don't know if we'll actually get audio, but it kind of takes with a little cartoon here of what their services provide. And then uh, kind of a little information, but this is the nice thing that they didn't have before, and that's this patient check-in steps, which is really nice because it goes through and specifically tells the client what they do need to do in order to get set up. And so if you're not, I mean, I'm assuming that you're already aware of this. Um, so you essentially can use Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. And I didn't try it, but I'm pretty sure the new version of Edge uh, that's available in the next version of Windows 10 uh, will also be able to support this. And the reason that I say that is because they uh, are essentially a Chromium, which is the backbone or this, the underlying structure of Google Chrome, is also built into Edge. Uh, 
So I'm pretty sure that that would work. I have not tested it yet. I will put that in the notes later on uh, once I do test it. Uh, Android Chrome, which obviously seems obvious, which means Android phones or um, tablets would be able to utilize this feature if they're using Android Chrome. And then obviously now iOS Safari can also work with it. In the past, they actually had an iOS app, um, but it looks like iOS Safari does work with it. Um, then what you do is you enter in your cl uh, clinician's doxing web address, or uh, what my wife does is that uh, essentially she sends out the link that's set up when she's ready, and they just click on it, and it automatically will take her to her doxing me room. Then you type in some name or your name, and then you move forward with it. The other thing that's important, make sure your browser is using the webcam and microphone. Again, uh, somebody, um, if you've used this for other purposes, like using uh, FaceTime or some other feature, you're already familiar with this kind of capability. Okay, and as I mentioned here, good internet connection. Restart your device before the visit. Uh, I highly recommend that too, and I think some other people have made that uh, point as well. Uh, if you've been working with your desktop, if you've uh, you know, got a lot of Chrome tabs open, uh, some of these tabs are still doing things in the background, which means they're also using your internet connection. So I would recommend essentially closing down Chrome, even restarting your entire PC before uh, you set this up. And again, if you've had the, the budget, set up a small PC. It doesn't need to be fancy or expensive. Um, just for this purpose, turn it on a few minutes before your session, and it's specifically dedicated to that, and you know that you have nothing else that may be interrupting your connection. But again, for your client, it's very important too, and what I tell my wife, and even my days of being back as an IT technician, is restart. It always seems to solve most of the problems, and even 30 years later, that still seems to be the case. Okay, and then obviously, um, I think it's improved. I remember three years ago that Doxy.me, it took a little while for them to get back, but I think their support team has worked a lot better. And then uh, there's, a down, there's a PDF version of this. I would recommend, if you're going to do this, take whatever information they've got here, including some of the notes that I made, and create your own little PDF version um, that you put on your website if you've got one, or make sure it's available to attach to the email uh, that you're sending your client so they immediately have something that they can work with um, instead of having to just direct them out to the link here. Okay, so um, that's about it. I mean, it has really become real easy now. And uh, we'll go through some troubleshooting right now, but uh, that'll take us to the next link. Let's see. Uh, here's your chat, so you can immediately chat with them. And then uh, the other area is they have a forum. And if you've not uh, been out there yet, a lot of your questions can be answered here. They do seem to have a search, so you can search it. So if you've got a particular issue, um, you can basically type in here. And let's say internet. That's probably going to bring up a lot of things, um, but it'll tell you anybody. Had, excuse me, anybody who's used the term internet, and you can go through there and basically look through it and see if it brings something up that you may have experienced. So this is interesting. Doxy can't keep up with demand. Essentially, if you're having issues, uh, this could be a problem. I don't think they have provided a service yet um, that allows you to basically click on it to determine if they've got any troubles. Uh, I have found that we've had to essentially write to them, and then we got feedback. So they might be a little bit better now. Uh, but uh, again, the, the area that, uh, as they call them, forums, it's a good place to go to for troubleshooting and so forth, and you can find a lot of information there, uh, like rants and raves. Yeah, someone here wants virtual backgrounds. If you've used Zoom, they have virtual backgrounds. And uh, I didn't really talk about it, but obviously your environment is pretty um, 
important. As you notice behind me, other than my All Things 3D logo, it's fairly sparse. Um, make sure that you're the center. Uh, don't have flashing lights or a lot of light in your background. Don't have objects moving. Try and keep it quiet, dim lit, and uh, you know, if you have some color, make sure it's subdued or, or very mild. I mean, essentially, make it like your office. Now, a lot of you are probably working from home, so it's not going to be the same as your office, but try to do the best in order to create the same quiet and I'm probably speaking to the choir here, so I won't even spend a lot of time on it. But obviously your environment is important, and uh, the most important thing is make sure you don't have a lot of backlighting. I've noticed some people like to be in front of a window or something like that, and that really blows out your image and makes it very difficult for the client to see you. Uh, so kind of close the drapes or that and just provide lighting coming on you and a nice subdued background. And if they ever come up with that feature, that's nice, but I've noticed a lot of people uh, kind of overuse that feature, and uh, then the background becomes the attention and not you as the um, provider. And the same thing with the client. The client shouldn't be doing anything in their background so that you can observe them. And the, as you're probably aware of, and probably why many of you don't use this feature other than the technical difficulties is it's really difficult all the nuances that uh, a provider needs to keep in mind when they're having uh, their sessions about the client themselves that uh, sometimes gets lost. Um, so that's why I recommend that again as I said earlier that your client has their camera and that all set up properly uh, to work with you. So again, this is a good place to go to, especially if you're feeling like you're having issues today. Uh, a lot of times people immediately uh, add something to the forum, so you might find something that uh, it's something that's not on your end, but it may be their software. One of the things that my wife noticed early on is not necessarily that the connection or the quality had changed, but just getting into the system uh, was a problem early uh, when they were starting to do a lot of uh, stay-at-home uh, states, and since obviously DoxyMe is nationwide, I don't know if I don't think they're international yet, but um, clearly other states are actually providing problems. And it's not necessarily the internet connection. As I said, it's the backbone that Google provides. Um, but if their servers and their front end aren't able to handle the traffic of people logging and so forth, uh, you'll have wait times. And so if you're seeing lag or a client doesn't seem to be able to log in or you as the provider can't log in, um, normally it's because there's a lot of traffic going on. So what I would recommend if you have the luxury of um, be able to change your time uh, so that's off peak, uh, I would probably recommend it. Then everybody else does it, then that it won't matter anymore. But if you can do it later in the evening um, or early in the morning, uh, but stay away from uh, peak periods, uh, that will also help you as well. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, well, let's actually go to a session. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in as my wife. Okay, so this is my wife's um, dashboard, and she can literally just provide this link here, copy it, and send it an email, so she may have another t uh, tab open. And then, uh, as mentioned, you can go in and edit uh, the waiting room. So we'll do and I've put up uh, a few little videos. I've got this, what I call the breath of the forest. I've been working on a VR app. Uh, that allows a person to basically be in the forest and there are trees and birds and animals. Um, but we have a little link there. And then obviously the information from DoxyMe themselves. But you can add, add, um, modify these, put your own notes in it by just clicking on the plus. So you could put text, a video, and uh, uh, just provide information about yourself, other services you may provide. Or maybe if you're really diligent, just go in and uh, add new text day to day. Uh, yeah, that might be useful and nice. Um, so that's available. And I think that, as mentioned, that's only available in the uh, professional version. OK, so account settings. 
So your personal information, your room settings, um, billing, login credentials, and I'm not going to go through any features on it. Your business associate agreement, desktop alerts, what type, waiting for if you want a sound. Uh, some people may not want a sound. Email alert, um, that's important as well. You may want emails, and she has it sent to hers. You could have a text message that goes to her, um, her phone number. And then uh, you know, your photo capture, your group call capability. And each of these you can expand. Let's see, let's go. And a screen share. Now, that could be a useful little feature. I know that I've actually, I'm doing something similar to that right now. But if you wanted to um, essentially share a part of the screen that you're working on, let's say a web page or something else, uh, this gives you that capability. I have not used this feature personally. Uh, the other area is, let's look at file transfer. Uh, you have the ability now to use here, uh, excuse me, HIPAA compliant peer-to-peer -peer encryption. So a person uh, can secure, you can uh, send and receive files this way. So if a person needs to send uh, you a file, I highly recommend doing this uh, instead of using email or some other service, uh, again, because it's already HIPAA compliant. But it's only in the professional version, so it's not in the... And then the last one, uh, we don't use this feature, but I know that other people have. You can use this. Well, actually, they use Stripe uh, to process this. I think we have a Stripe account, but uh, we use Square, and we have uh, uh, our basically a service set up with them and uh, she basically works from that uh, direction. When they first set this up, I think it was a little difficult. I have not tried it since. If anybody has worked with it, uh, just let me know or provide some feedback to others. And then as it says, you won't be able to use an iOS app. However, I don't think, in fact, I looked, there is no iOS app anymore, so I don't think this applies anymore. So again, these are features that are available only in the uh, professional. And then we can jump up to the group call again. This is for multiple participants. Um, we, I essentially um, pointed my wife into this direction. She was able to figure it out on her own, so I don't think this is very difficult. Uh, some people have complained um, that the quality is inconsistent. And again, that's quite possible. As mentioned, sometimes the person with the weakest quality signal seems to affect everybody. Um, so keep that in mind if you're using it. Uh, like I said, there are other ways to take screen captures. I guess that's built in. Uh, what's not, but the, there is an important thing, and I read somewhere else that doing these kind of things of capturing or recording the video, um, there are laws in certain states, I think Oregon is one of them, uh, that if you do record or take images, uh, you need to make sure that you identify to your client that you're doing so um, before working with it. And so, okay, and badges. I, okay, so you can set up, this is my wife's obviously, and then uh, you can set up HTML code, which we also I think have set up on our website um, so that it really can take you to this as well. So I'm about done with this. Um, oh, again, as far as I'm not going to go into it because I don't know how much information is provided. But uh, actually, I could jump back to my main screen and look at it. But the, the meeting history, OK. So yeah, so I can go back there. So essentially, it tells you your meeting histories and how much time. And uh, again, I, yeah, I guess I could show it. Uh, there's nothing uh, there that identifies it. But it, it tells you essentially your date, the start times, and the duration. And uh, as you can see, my wife is all over the place as far as her timing. But uh, it, it could, you know, that's the flexibility. And uh, clearly, it really helps a lot of people. I, I think personally, if I were going to get uh, uh, go to therapy, I much prefer that than actually having to get in the car and drive. Um, so each to their own. And uh, hopefully this helps. 
And if you have any questions, please uh, go to uh, the Google forum and uh, write them out, and I'll try to answer them in the next couple of days. Uh, I've had another project that I've been working on, so I wasn't able to dedicate as much time as I wanted to this, but hopefully this is a good overview. Um, so to summarize, uh, for us, Doximia has worked really well, and uh, you know, I would suggest spending the extra money. $35 can be a, a lot, but right now, uh, some of you may not have to pay uh, rent for an office, so there's a good place to put the money. But uh, and I'm thinking most of you probably still have a a fairly heavy client load since a lot of people right now have a lot of anxiety. So uh, I would think that I would move to the professional if you have not done so already. Um, set up your office, good lapel mic, headphones or earbuds. I recommend and. Uh, Make sure that you have a nice video webcam. Some of the newer laptops and all-in-one uh, desktops have okay webcams, but I would recommend buying a decent Logitech, again, 920 uh, or 930, um, because the quality is decent. And more importantly, there's not a lot of noise, and it seems to balance color fairly well. And then uh, once you have those items out of the way, just make sure your internet connection is stable. It doesn't need to be the fastest, which means make sure nobody else is on it. Make sure you have nothing else running, uh, like Netflix or anything else in the background. Even if you're, um, you know, say you have a device on, sometimes it can, like Windows is notorious for it, it can be downloading its latest update. So if you've got other machines, either turn them off or disconnect them from the internet um, before you start your session. That's really important. Um, so I'm kind of rambling right now. Uh, I think that's about it. I appreciate it. I hope uh, this was useful to you. And if you'd like uh, a little more narrow information somewhere, just again email, I can put something else together. And uh, again, thank you, and uh, hopefully this was useful. Bye.